in a tournament named for the greatest bowler of all time, these three heavyweights. Tommy Jones, Patrick Allen, and the legendary Pete Weber are trying to get to the title match. But waiting for them isn't another veteran, but a young powerhouse named Ryan Simonelli, the number one seed who's looking for his first win on the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour. It's a classic battle of youth versus experience. Here at the one -a day Earl Anthony Memorial Classic, next. Huge crowd today in the building with the legend's name on the marquee. We welcome you to Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl just outside of Oakland for our live coverage of the one-a-day Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. It was a historic Saturday last weekend in Las Vegas, but there is no Tournament of Champions hangover this Sunday here in Dublin. We have three of the sports top 50 greatest bowlers ever on the show, plus one young Italian stallion trying to win his first title. Match number one hits two future Hall of Famers and Tommy Jones versus Patrick Allen, the winner to take on the man who two years ago was voted the fourth greatest bowler all time, Mr. Pete Weber, and on top 24-year-old Buffalo native Ryan Simonelli. Joining me now, newly enshrined PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson, and there's something about a show that includes Pete Weber. You, me, our crew, the crowd all seems to have a little extra hop in their step when PD Dub's in the house. Well, he's the most recognizable player on our tour and has been for a lot of years. He's been the face of the PBA. Whether you love him or you hate him, Pete Weber always makes for great television. But, you know, the thing for me, Rob, is I just love watching his bowling style. I call it poetry in motion. You couple that with that personality, hey, it just makes for great TV. Uh, wonderful theater. Now, he is our number two seed, which means he will face the winner of match number one, two guys who are destined to join you, my friend, in the PBA Hall of Fame Club. Well, the similarities between these two careers is very striking. You look at the titles, the number of majors, the back-to-back -back player of the years, and ironically, their last wins coming in Japan. But you're right, both future Hall of Famers and, oh, by the way, if you're looking for a verbal war, these two can bring it as well. That's right. Lefty versus righty in match number one. Time now for the introductions of match number one. The number four qualifier owns 13 career PBA Tour titles, including a pair of majors. Former PBA Rookie and Player of the Year from Greenville, South Carolina, TJ Tommy Jones. So Tommy Jones, hard throwing righty, 13 tour titles, two majors. Second time we've seen him this season. That is a pain start. Well, speaking of pain, spare shots are a painful issue. Tommy Jones on so many levels this yeah, week. And they have been since last summer. Tommy's going to throw it really hard at the 6-10, hope to bounce one over into the 4-7. Oh. Mm. And an open frame to start off for Tommy Jones. The number three seed is a 13-time PBA Tour champion, including two majors, former PBA Player of the Year from Wesley Chapel, Florida, PA, Patrick Allen. Good to see PA for the first time this season. Yeah, Haas. I mentioned two majors, the 05 PBA World Champion and the 09 TOC title. Patrick Allen, lefty from just outside Tampa, Florida, Wesley Chapel. <laughs> Take a look at PA's arsenal for today's broadcast. Patrick Allen using the rain, and, uh, you know, the, along with Tommy Jones, we saw both players going through several bowling balls 
before the start of this match, they got about 20 minutes of practice and really jogging back and forth, trying nice to figure out a way today. to trick up this very sensitive Orlando. Didn't think it rained here. You see that one right about the fourth or fifth board, barely straight. A little bit back in reaction there for Patrick Allen. Made two TV appearances last season, finishing second Thank you. and third. This is Thank first you. of the season. And has an early lead over Tommy Jones, who had an open frame in the first. Leads the seven pin goes to Southpaw. Patrick Allen also battling injuries the last couple of years and one of them specifically being the knee but boy he really liked this shot Rob you see that one just feathering right around the first arrow big back end reaction there only to leave a ringing seven where the four pin just kind of slings around that seven pin a strained patella tendon in his right knee is which is what has been giving him problems that's his slide foot P.A. will take a seat with a strike and a spare. Great crowd here in Dublin for the one-a-day Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. We'll hear from Earl Anthony's widow in a couple of segments. Susie Anthony in the crowd again. Wonderful, wonderful woman. Yes, she is. So Tommy Jones in the second off that open frame in the first. Let it go, Tommy. Get it. What is that? Get it going away from you. It's soft. Jeez. Talk about the pain that Tommy Jones is fighting. Some left hip issues from uh, kind of a freakish injury he suffered over the summer where he slipped and landed. Oh. Oh, an audio pack that was placed on him, and he has so many issues with the spare shots really seems to affect him even more and there's Tommy with the spare issue right there and Tommy tell us about the the pain level right now in that left hip no it's okay those are just two terrible shots no excuses and here is a look at one of those quote terrible shots well because he stands up on it a little bit more at the foul line you can see him reaching for that left hip After back to back open frames, Jones gets a ticket on the strike train. Uh, you, you heard him say, I, you know, I just have to let it go. And what that means is he's got to trust the ball a little bit to the right. We even saw him earlier in practice trying to go straighter, but he decides to move in and go with something that hooks. And he's right. That shot there, he trusted. Gets this one off his hand from in to out. And all that power just shreds the rack. The key for Jones don't give into the pain and throw a lot of strikes. Here is P.A. in the third. Strike spare. Maybe. And you got to love it when he talks to himself after he lets go of it. I love it. P.A. lets go of it. He says, maybe, maybe. Well, there was no maybe about that shot. Here's how P.A. Got here, 13th after qualifying. Lost to your number one seed, Ryan Simonelli, in the position round. He is your third seed, the winner to take on Pete Weber. We begin the fourth. Baby Hoss. And again, he leaves the seven pin. Yeah, again on the left lane, just an ugly ring in seven. Again, back to back on that left lane. Boy, you want to talk about making some great shots early on. That's Patrick Allen. Remember, former player of the year, major championship winner. We haven't seen him lately. It's, been, it, a, it's been a rough season. Yeah, and it just, you know, it's it's odd when, you know, when there's television without Patrick Allen. Best finish up until this weekend was 43rd this season. Twice he's coming 43rd. Yeah, and there was nobody happier to get out of Las Vegas than Patrick Allen. 
Really had a tough go at the World Series of Bowling. Tough go at the Tournament of Champions. Well, speaking of tough goes, Tommy Jones is having a tough go of things here through three frames. Down 25 after a pair of opening or a pair of open frames. Jacks for Tommy Jones. Yeah, just a beautiful shot right there. He followed it up with that great strike in the third frame using a mission 2.0. Again, he can go to something a little stronger, but this is the one he chose. Remember, you got you got to dance with the one you brought. Or that brought you. Or Something like that. Dance with the one you brung. Maybe just carpool. Get the game! You know, and here's the thing, Robbie throws three bagger right there after two open frames. And he gets right back into this match because Patrick Allen was not able to string strikes. So three in a row now for Jones. Get the game! And a little. Get in the game. And a little momentum on TJ's side now as he sits and waits for PA Haas to step up here in the fifth. Strike spare, strike spare. All two of those strikes have been on this right lane. Third time today he has left the seven pin already. He said he really worked hard on his footwork and his arm swing after Las Vegas. He said he feels really good. And the combination of their good footwork and swing equals a really good hand at release. All five shots thus far in the pocket. Two strikes and three seven pins is all Patrick Allen has to show for it. Says his approach when he walks up a lot straighter now than maybe it used to be in the past. Which I think makes his swing more in line. Hey, the oh, come on. So PA remains clean through five. Oh, yeah. Said his physical game was about as good as it's been in, in a quite some time this week. His push away was better. Oh, and he said, you know, he spent a lot of time crossovering this week with guys like Tommy Jones and Chris Barnes. You know, we're passing along some encouraging words about what they were seeing finally from PA this season. Come on. the six pin the toughest part about television Rob you, you know you, you get the, the practice and, and a lot of times you second guess yourself as to which line and, and which bowling ball to throw and a lot of times it's just making a really good educated guess but you have to be committed to that Patrick Allen right now his struggles are with pin carry he's hit the pocket every shot he's he only has two strikes to show for it and thus, this is a three-pin match, even though Tommy Jones had two open pins early. Yeah, PA had a huge early lead due to a pair of gaffes by Jones, but PA has allowed Tommy back into it. When we return, we'll tell you about Allen's odd last week at the TOC, a withdrawal, and a VIP view of the lowest score in televised PBA history. Second consecutive season, the PBA has been here at Earl Anthony's Dublin Bowl. We're getting set for the conclusion of match number one between Tommy Jones and Patrick Allen. But up now, your Lumber Liquidators Know the Wood weekly segment. The 40-foot Earl Anthony oil pattern puts an emphasis on shot making and creativity, and none was better at it than Earl Anthony. But unlike most oil patterns, this pattern actually gets wider at the end. That forced the right-handers to play the deep inside line and the lefties to play out because the break point got so critical. But I think because the left-handers can play out, huge advantage for the southpaws today. Hey, and two southpaws on the show, one of them right now, Patrick Allen. And then your number one seed, Ryan Simonelli, PA on top by only three. As Tommy Jones is set to step up and close out the sixth. PA during the break thinking about some major adjustments if TA or if Tommy is allowed to string together a few more strikes. He's looking for four in a row right here. Well, Rob. 
job. Here's your opening. Hambone is in the house. That's a great sign. Four in a row for Tommy Jones, who is right back in this and on top by seven, his first lead of the day. And, Rob, you, you touched on it. Patrick Allen during the break was talking to uh, his coach, Chris Schlemmer, in that depending on what Tommy does here in these next two shots, Patrick may have to make a big change. Tommy not ready, didn't like it, heard something. Yeah, there was some noise in the <clears> background. <throat> some guys were uh, warming up several lanes <coughs> beyond the set, and it was a loud thump that I could hear through my headset right as he was approaching. And that's smart. Yeah, that's a veteran move. Yep. When in doubt, pull out. Big time shot making right there, and you, you're looking at a former player of the year who said, You know what? I know I got off to a rough start with back to back open frames, but I still know how to bowl and I know how to play this game, and I'm going to show you. He steps up and just throws a five bagger right in the face of Patrick Allen. Great decision by Jones to walk away from that initial approach and regroup. And now he is starting to pull away from PA. Big ball change here, and PA talked about it in the break, and he saw what Jones just did, and he says, it is time to make a move now. I wrote style. Yeah, Messenger kicks the seven late, his third strike of the match, all of them coming on that lane. And, and this is what separates professionals from amateurs, where Patrick Allen can make the change with conviction and step up and pure it and still hit the pocket. A lot of times you'll see players that they're hitting the pocket, they can't carry, they go change uh, to another bowling ball, and they lose the pocket altogether. It's an open frame, not Patrick Allen. <sighs> so three strikes and four spares. But all four of those spares have been nine spares. So he is not struggling. He's just not getting the pin carry like you mentioned, Randy. Stay stagnant. Now the ball change is only for the right lane, which is very interesting because he was striking on that lane. Oh, that's pretty good. Back-to-back -back jacks for the Hawks. And, and Rob, the reason why he changed balls only on the right lane is because he left, in his own words, the Kadoink seven. That's the weak seven. He didn't like the way the ball hit on that right lane, so that's why he switched on that right lane only, even though he hasn't struck yet until that shot on the left lane. Now let's see what that sudden burst by PA does to Tommy Jones, who's working on five in a row. Yep, 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 yep it. Head on over God. to PBA.com right now during our telecast to submit your more of what matters to you fan question brought to you by the makers of One A Day. Direct your question to anybody on today's show or even Randy in the booth. If your question is selected, call your name on air and you'll hear it live. Tommy Jones, who's had problems with single pin spares all week, able to struggle through that one and knock it down. I'll tell you what, Tommy Jones could sure use some pain relief from shooting spares. Max scores. Patrick Allen can shoot 238 if he strikes out. Tommy Jones, the best he can shoot, 234. Jones has never lost to PA on television. <laughs> really good shot there. Hey, you're wondering why Tommy doesn't have the same amount of hip pain when he throws a strike ball. He gets much deeper into the slide so that the knee is, <coughs> excuse me, is absorbing the brunt of all of that weight. The spare shot, he's straight-legged, much faster, much more upright. All of a sudden, that load goes into the hip. And that head goes down as soon as he releases it. That is fighting through some major discomfort. So... Back-to-back -back spares for Jones. You see the anguish immediately on his face as the hand goes right to that left hip. It's the front of the left hip while he's going, almost kind of in a hernia-type spot, but he says when he sleeps, it's more to the side and the back of his hip. 
Yeah, had x-rays, nothing but waiting on an MRI. Yeah, it, it almost looked like groin. Mm -hmm. Kind of a groin pulled, some type of groin injury, but it's not. It's in the hip. Oh, that's got to hit a little. Three in a row for PA. Didn't think he had it, but he'll take the result. He's going to take a rear act, I believe, on the left lane. And what a great ball choice that he changed to in the seventh frame. On, he got a little better than that. He said that one's got a hook a little bit. It did. He gets into the swish zone, throws three in a row. Now, that, yeah. a strike here. Come on. And good count. He'll that. lock out you know Tommy Jones. Mean. He'll put him in the 220s, Rob. Come on. Talked about an interesting week for PA last week in Las Vegas. Actually had to withdraw with two games to go. With three blisters on his left middle finger. I mean, not one, not two, but three blisters. And then his buddy Tom Doherty bowling and he had to sit in the VIP room and watch him stretch to drop 100. PA was cheering for a 99 actually. Maybe, maybe. Yes! Well, we told you at the top of the show how fun these two are to watch. Patrick Allen needs good count now. Avoid the big giant big four splitter five count washout and he's going to move on. Good count. Look at this ball just rip back, shred the rack. Looks like three in a row. The last three shots all shredded the rack. One good shot away from moving on and taking on PDW. That was not the shot he needed in a tough 2-7 is what he leaves. Yeah, but it's more than enough. Nine out here gives him 225. The best Tommy Jones can shoot 223. And it's all over but the shout, and P.A. will move on, take on Pete Weber, but not before picking up that great spare. So the Hoss moves on with the 226. Up next, the wife of the late great Earl Anthony joins us, plus a poll question around the greatest bowler in PBA history. We welcome you back to Dublin, California, the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic, brought to you by One A Day. And Tommy Jones had a big comeback in the middle of this match, but it wasn't enough as PA found the right ball and moves on with the three-pin victory. Glad you're back here with us live this week on ESPN2. Last week, we were in Las Vegas for the Tournament of Champions. This week, we go a little further west here in Dublin, California, just outside of the San Francisco, Oakland area, where the, the home where Earl Anthony used to live right now, his name on the marquee of this building, and the PBA on their website this week offered up their choices for the five greatest moments in Earl Anthony's career, and here are the top three as selected by those who logged on. And there's a lot of moments you could choose from. Was it back in 1982 when he became the first bowler to earn a million dollars? Yep, that's what you guys voted on. The second winner was Mike Durbin, beating him in 1983 to win his sixth PBA National Championship. And coming up third, one of those great showdowns with Mark Roth. That was the fourth and final time they met on TV. We go back to our winner where Earl became the first bowler to earn $1 million in career earnings by winning the 82 PBA National Championship. That one came in Toledo, Ohio. He was the tournament leader for that event. That event now known as the PBA World Championship. Again, Earl won 10 majors through his illustrious career. Number one all time, 43 career titles, second most all time. And two years ago, he was voted the greatest bowler in history. Standing by on the lane, Randy Peterson with Earl's wife. Susie. Thanks, Rob. And Susie, I know there, there had to be so many great moments, but from that list, I know you voted. What was your best moment? Well, I looked at the list. Two of the events were before my time. Um, two of them I recalled pretty clearly, so I went with the Mark Roth moment when he beat Mark Roth. I really didn't, you know, I liked Mark Roth. Earl and Mark got along real well, and when, when Earl bowled Mark, it wasn't, you know, the threat of a loss wasn't as painful as with others, which is why the recollection probably wasn't as strong, and I just wanted to see that again. Well, that's great. I think that was my favorite moment as well, but what does it mean to you to have the legacy of Earl live on? Uh, well, Earl, you know, he was huge in the sport. I mean, 
a lot of us miss him, probably me more than anybody, and it just brings him back. You know, it brings him back for those of us who loved him. He was great, and it just, you know, and for me, the whole week, and, you know, it just makes, for me, it feels like he's still a big part of my life. Susie, a lot of us think you're great, too. Rob? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Wonderful to hear from Susie. Classy lady. Up next, that man, the living legend. Pete Weber makes his 124th singles TV finals appearance. The man behind the shades flexing his pipes has his sights set on career title number 36. So Patrick Allen, your three seed, has moved on by three pins to take on your two seed Pete Weber, our semifinal match on deck right now at the one a day Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, glad you're with us this Sunday afternoon here on ESPN2. P.A., the Hoss, making his first televised appearance of the season. Had a strong start. Well, lost it what? and gained it back in the nick of time to win by three pins over Tommy Jones. On that left lane. Majors, good for third and second on the all time list from St. Ann, Missouri, PBA Hall of Famer, Pete Weber. PD Dub does not look like he's 48. He does not act it either. He is pure theater. Stuff. I'll tell you where you really feel it though when you're 48 is the nerves. And Pete's body's still in pretty good shape, but I'll tell you what, it's the nerves is where it hits you. Here are some of the guys who have had over a hundred career televised appearances. Parker Bone the third, 107, Earl Anthony, 114. There's Pete Weber. Today, 124, and your all-time leader, Walter Ray Williams Jr., 172. Only six have made a century's worth of appearances. Walt Ray, almost 50 more appearances than Pete Weber. Back to back, the opening jacks for PD Dub. And nobody on this tour more fun to watch when they get it going than this man right here. And I want you to watch this little love tap right here on the 10. All right, get out of there. He gets a little, uh, gives it a little, yeah. All right, but that's nothing. Wait till, you, wait till you see Pete throw four in a row. I think he's got a little message for you, Rob. It's one of the reasons I showed up with a smile on my face today. Here is P.A. in the second, trying to match Weber. Well, high road. Allen voted the 44th greatest player in PBA history couple seasons ago. We're going to scroll underneath right now the list of the other finishers and Mika well, Koivu Nuyemi, who won quarter of a million dollars last Saturday, missed the show by Gotta do it. one pin this Got week. Shot. Jason Couch, the lefty from Claremont, Florida, had a great run as well. There's Parker Bone the third. Still haven't Sorry, seen him you know or Ronnie Russell this it. season. Ditto for Just your 10th finisher, Ryan He's Schaefer. Afraid. It's our first tournament this season where we had multiple left-handers on the telecast, and really the first tournament that stands out to me to where the lefties actually had a breakout week. All right move, it is, baby, yeah. Patch Gallon using the same ball on both lanes now. Right move, baby, you betcha. And I'll tell you, Rob, anytime you have a show with Pete Weber, yeah, it's great, but you know what? You sprinkle in a little Patrick Gallon and some Tommy Jones, it's a nice mix. Nothing but strikes thus far in our semifinal match. PA has fascinating inner dialogues that he shares with us. Here is Weber stepping up in the third, down 10. Come on, 
on. Lead off triple for the St. Louis Cardinal fan. Take a look at what PD Dub is throwing at the pins today. P. Weber going with the Marvel, the hookingest bowling ball for him in the locker room. And he told us, well, you know, I've been working real hard with Brother Rich back home, working on my posture, trying to stand tall and get rid of that early tilt. See, Pete Weber's worn a golf glove on that right hand forever. Protect those fingers. The full stretched fingertip grip of Pete Weber. Weber, the 10 pin shy of a ham bone. He wanted it. He's not the only one in this house who wanted it. I want you to take a look at the finish of Pete Weber right here. Very uncharacteristic of Pete to come up and out of it. Looks like he slipped a little bit there on that shot. He really liked it, though, off his hand. And only to look at him. Ring and 10 pin staring him in the face. First right. non strike of the semifinal match. Yeah, I know you wanted that, uh, that four bagger really bad, Rob. But a what? The four bagger, the four in a row, the quad. I know you wanted that really bad, but you're, you're going to have to wait, sir. Well, he said he had some struggles this week with with spares, and it was uh, because he drilled a new spare ball this week. I was week, worried about that one. <laughs> said the three six ten was the spare problem that he really had and has always had. Now here's. PA sitting on a triple, ready to drop a four bagger here in the semifinals. Waiting in the wings, your one seed, Ryan Simonelli. <laughs> Hambone! Second Hambone of the afternoon for the Hoss, Patrick Allen, ESPN is your. Home court of college hoops. Big Monday doubleheader on ESPN at 7. It's Biggie Showdown. Louisville almost pulled an upset at UConn yesterday. They take out Georgetown, who had a big win. And then at 9 Eastern, Jordan Hamilton and the Longhorns taking on Texas A&M. Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN. And both those games also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. Allen to begin the fifth. He has been perfect thus far. Mm. Mm. Solid eight pin for Patrick Allen. The bowling ball goes right past that. It's known as a stone eight. As in, he got robbed by the stone eight. Now, somebody gave me a sign you today it, right? here that said, can you please start you saying stone eight? I don't get many opportunities. So there well, it is. that certainly was one of yeah. them. And, and I was going to say, Patrick Allen's been navigating his way through this oil pattern very nicely mm -hmm. today, changing bowling balls, but not only that, just making quality shots. Pocket has been his friend today. Yeah. And, and Rob, you just don't see him throwing it all over the building. I mean, he's making great quality shots. Had a 226, dropping six strikes, including four in a row in his match one victory over Tommy Jones. Now he's taking on Pete Weber, who he's defeated twice in the previous TV encounters. Here's how PD Dub got here. This is his fourth top 20 finish of the season, and this is best result of this campaign. He's been 17th twice up until now. Did not like it at all. Let it go. Well, and you, you, you talked about Pete not wanting to shoot the 3 6 10. Well, you got to add the 9 oh, pin now, and it makes it even that much tougher because of the back pin. If Pete just looked hesitant it's on this shot, really he grabbed hard. it and never gave it room to the right. And right now in trouble. Trying to avoid the open frame. God. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, it, especially when his opponent started with, with the front four. 
Weber behind the eight ball now. And that deficit just went. Was 26 before the open frame. Excuse Weber me. Needs a strike here in the sixth. And he'll get it! That close to a 7-10, he'll take the scrappy drop. And he gets a little momentum back on his side, and the crowd to boot. Ah, flexing the guns as PD Dub. Down goes the 7, down goes the 10. How much longer will the 48-year-old be out on the tour? We'll tell you when we return for the conclusion of a semifinal match with PA. Welcome back, everyone, to Dublin, California. Randy Peterson, Rob Stone, the Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. Hey, you know what? Let's take a look at the Bear Trusted Pain Relief Replay brought to you by the makers of Bear Aspirin. Pete Weber coming off an open frame just when it looked like a possible 7-10 split. Pete says no. Let me give you this little chop, and I'll take that strike in the sixth. A huge moment in this match as things were starting to slip away from Weber. He went spare open frame in the fourth on, and the man. fifth. This was coming after Allen opened up with a four-bagger. Now here is P.A. trying to get back on the strike train to close out the sixth. Still comfortably in control, but let's keep an eye on how he reacts. You said four-bagger. Every once in a while, I let that slip out for the old-timers. No messenger to no take care up. of the seven. A little late pop on the back part of the lane on that shot there. That caused the ball to come in a little bit late, a little bit behind the head pin. And Patrick Allen leaves the corner. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Slick. Nine spares for PA. Next Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday on ESPN 4 Eastern. Yes, Lil Wayne. Yes, is going to be with us. Nelly, Reggie Bush, and Chris Paul. The Chris Paul PBA Celebrity Invitational. It was taped a couple weeks ago in New Orleans and. Uh, we had fun. Yes, we did. It's going to be a very enjoyable telecast. You are going to enjoy it as well. Live on ESPN at 4 o'clock. PD Dub was there. PA is here as we begin the seventh. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. One of my favorite lines in all of bowling. PA's. Maybe. It's just great television. It's great to watch. Not only. Pete Weber, but that man right there. Let's see if Pete Weber can get one off his hand on this right lane and double up to cut the deficit to 15. A strike in the seventh and eighth. He'll only trail by five. Back-to-back -back jacks. Well, he pride the native of St. Anne, Missouri. He sure did. Now, Pete Weber, third all-time with 35 career Lumber Liquidator PBA Tour titles. And, Randy, they have been spread out. The 80s, he took home 13. 11 in the 90s. 10 in the 2000s. Just one. We're early. It's early. We're early in this decade. And we asked Pete yesterday, how much longer are you going to bowl? He's going to be 49 in August. And he said, as long as there is an exempt tour, and as long as I'm exempt, I'll be here. Which is good news for a lot of people. Hard to imagine this tour without Pete Weber. Hallelujah. Oh, got a hook. Got a hook. Hook! Dang it. I think I threw it that bad. Well, he puts a great touch on this just to get it back to the pocket, but because it drifts so far past that head pin, see how it comes in late behind it. He's going to leave a corner pin every time doing that, but got no love, no kick off the sidewall. Pete Weber now. 
trailing by 16 with a spare here in the eighth frame. Patrick Allen in the driver's seat. And again, PA has not missed the pocket all afternoon. Uh, that was a little better than that. So Allen steps up. He took care of Tommy Jones in match number one, 226 to 223. Just like Tuesday. Just like Tuesday, man. Come on. Just like Tuesday. Well, it's the first time we've seen that from him today, Rob, where he throws a shot, doesn't like it as soon as it leaves his hand, goes through the nose, leaves a 2 4 7. Little grab left the target, excuse me, right of target. He's got no chance of holding line. But again, working on a strike, it's very important. If he covers a spare here, he doesn't lose pin count. If he was on a spare, obviously, he would have lost three. Big pickup by PA. Head on over to PBA.com right now. Check out all the great merchandise and apparel that's oh, me, Tommy. apparel that is available in their online store. Oh, T-shirts, polos, hats, hoodies, retro shirts, bowling towels, and more. Simply click on the shop tab at PBA.com. I made a big purchase earlier today over at the uh, merchandise Good. table over there. I'm still waiting for my He's discount, done, yeah. which I don't think I got. Hope you get your credit card back. If <laughs> not, I'm going to use it. <laughs> yeah, people are feasting on my Amex already, huh? We begin the foundation frame ninth with Allen off a of spare. Wow. Drow is right. What has happened to Hawks? 2 6 10. And it could have happened at a worse time for Patrick Allen. Cuts right through the nose. A nice break would have been to trip that two pin out instead. He's faced himself with a dilemma. Does he try to convert or does he try and just take out the six and the ten and stay ahead in the count game? What would you do? Well, that would put him at 193. He's shooter. He could strike out for 223. The he's best shooter. Weber can shoot, however, he's though, shooter, 232. I think at this point he's got to try to convert it. They're tied. Excuse me, Patrick Allen still leading by one in the count department. However, now it's a 223. Pete Weber, and he's in control of his own destiny. Now he can strike out 232, but it starts right here with the first strike in the ninth frame. That just wasn't a good shot. I think it was probably because of the shot he threw in the left lane where he got it wide. He tried to go a little straighter and tighter with that. Went through it with a little loft, and it was just too straight up the front part of the lane. So Weber leaves the four pin on this shot, and this is becoming a case, Randy, here from the eighth frame on where neither guy really wants to seize this one. The best Weber could shoot 221. Remember, right. Patrick Allen could still that shoot. Was a little bit better than that, Pete. He can still shoot 223. The last two shots now. that Patrick Allen has thrown have both gone through the nose. Pete Weber's last two shots, 10 pin, 4 pin. A pressure-filled 10th frame on deck right now. Weber down two, working a spare. Right of target. Not the time for That's that. That's kind of close. Well, just a bad shot. And 
Pete will be the first one to tell you now. I knew I wanted to throw it right, but not quite that far. Exactly. Now he leaves himself the rail, the one, two, four, seven. And with a spare and a strike, he's only going to be able to shoot 207. That means that Patrick Gallon with any kind of mark and good count in the 10th frame will bowl for the title. So Weber able to cover that one. <laughs> The rail? I knew there was rail. Out of I like that. I didn't want to hit it though. You know, we talked about this when we when we saw the Know the Woods segment and how the players nice try to manipulate try. the end of the pattern. And for Weber, nice it's try. it was that axis rotation, that axis tilt that would get his ball to read when he missed a little bit to the right. That shot just way too far right. There's a good one. I'll throw it like that. And leaves the seven. Will that be it? For Pete Weber today, he will sit down with a 206 and see what Patrick Allen can do. <laughs> Tommy, bro. Patrick needs a mark and four, and Tommy. he's going to bowl for the title. Patrick on, Allen man. looking, come on, to become 14-time winner. Still loose. Still loose. Still loose. Still loose. Needs to pick this one up and then get four pins. And real easy to chop this spare, chop the two off the four. Patrick Allen's a great spare shooter. Right now, again, he needs to make this and then four on the on the, the shot behind. afterward. You gotta stay behind it, man. Last three shots went through the you nose. Stay behind it. And that's what happens when he gets around it. You gotta stay behind it. Come on. Stay behind it. Come on, stay behind it. Ooh. No chop, Man. but awfully close. You, you have no idea how close that was. I mean, he could have chopped the two straight back off the four there. Very, very fortunate. Now needs just four pins Gotta to move on, on the front, right? to the title match. I mean, if you want a diagram of how to chop the two off the four, that was it. Oh, it's Jesus. And the Hoss moves on. An all lefty final on deck. But before we hit our title match, we'll reflect back on last Saturday's wild day in Las Vegas. A Hall of Fame ceremony, a 100 game, a 299 from that man, plus a quarter of a million dollars put in Nika Koivu Niemi's bank account. All that when we return to the PBA on ESPN. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, welcoming you back to our live coverage of the one today Earl Anthony Memorial Classic. Patrick Allen, a pair of tight wins. He has moved on to the title match to take on Ryan Simonelli. Time now for our Geico Championship Recap. Randall. You got it, Rob. Match number one featured Tommy Jones, Patrick Allen. You see the pain Tommy Jones has to endure on a weekly basis. Here's some more pain delivered by Patrick Allen. First strike in the 10th frame. Sealed the deal. And in match number two, Patrick Allen takes on PDW, Pete Weber. He gets up in the 10th frame looking to put some pressure on Patrick Allen. Instead, he has to wave goodbye to a shot that was wide right. Patrick Allen needs to make that spare there. Almost chops it, but he advances to the title match. And time now for that title match uninterrupted. The Jerkers leader earned two second place finishes last season in three televised appearances from Cheek to Waga, New York, the Ryan Express. Ryan Simonelli. This is Simonelli's fourth career TV singles appearance. Twice was a runner-up at last season's World Series of Bowling. Improved all week from 11th after round one of qualifying to 10th, 6th, and now here he sits as the number one seed. Yeah, great start. He just blew up that rack. A pair of lefties here in the title match. Something that 
And you talked about, Randy, you thought lefties would have some success today. Yeah, and, and it's it's proven to, to go in that direction that the, they're able to play that outside line. It stays there a little bit longer, less friction on the left side. And so the way the two left-handers broke down this TV pair in practice really was the undoing of the righties. That and a couple of errant shots by Weber and Tommy Jones. Remember? Remember Tommy o started his match against PA with back-to-back -back open frames. PA gets the seven to kick, and Allen telling us yesterday, the last year and a half, he was starting to feel that maybe his level was beginning to slip. Maybe he didn't quite belong at the level that he used to hold. And this week, he felt he was back in a better place. The game has evolved so much, hard to keep up with these high rev rate guys, but when you have the experience of a guy like Patrick Allen checking in at 40 years of age and 12 years on the tour, there's a lot to be said for that, a lot of pins that, that run with that type of resume. Well, winning cures a lot of ailments in any sport, and Patrick Allen looking to join an elite group of, with a win today. He will be a 14-time titleist, joining Mike Durbin, Dave Husted, Johnny Petraglia, Jim Stefanich, all Hall of Famers. Lay there. Two four seven leave for PA. And so the issue that Patrick is going to have in this match, folks, is that now he has to deal with the extremely high rev rate of Ryan Simonelli and how that is going to change or break down the old pattern on the left side of the lane. Well, remember, PA made a huge ball change in match number one, which helped carry him through that game to get the win. He knows how to play. He knows how to be resourceful. And he knows That's how, how to you're cover. supposed to make that stand. So strike spare for PA. And now here's Ryan Simonelli from the Buffalo, New York area, Cheektowaga, which is a future stop on the PBA Tour. Trying to win his first ever Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour title. He ended last season in the top 20 in earnings and points and top 10 in average. Back to back. Opening jacks for Simonelli. And now it's time for the Just for Men Live Forward Keys to Victory. Randy? Well, for Ryan Simonelli, it, it's pretty simple. He's got to keep his head on straight. He's got to think the right thoughts mentally, manage his nerves, and the other is speed control. He is a high rev, high power, high speed kind of guy. The only time that I can remember him making bad shots is when he got over jacked and he threw the ball too hard and it blew through the end of the pattern. Keep his emotions in check. Keep his speed where it needs to be so the ball reads properly. Get up! Get! Go! Early indications are he's in a good place today. Right now, just manage the nerves. Don't get too jacked. Continue to make those kind of shots. Easier said than done. Tremendous amount of revolutions in hand. We normally see Ryan on the telecast throwing urethane because of that extremely high rev rate. This week was able to use reactive equipment. Patrick Allen must call oh, upon all of his man. experience. Come to, on, man. To try and figure out a way Carter. to beat Ryan Simonelli, the high rev, high powered youngster looking to win his first title. Patrick has to stay ahead of the breakdown, stay ahead of the moves. He's got to bowl a perfect game. Okay. Remains clean. Strike, spare, spare for PA. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Come on. Come on, man. It's fun listening to it. It is. It? I mean, some of the Come stuff on. that, all the self talk, and I love it. A lot of, a lot of players do that on the one. inside. PA does it on the outside. Come on. Tuesday. Keep 
that's reflecting back to Tuesday, which was a positive day for him here at the lanes and trying to bring that back. And here he is back on the strike train. Right, and that's just a great break right there, tripping the 6-9 out. And you can see the high rev rate of Ryan Simonelli breaking the oil pattern down. Patrick Allen needs to stay one step ahead of the breakdown and continue to chase the oil pattern to the right or center part of the lane. Now watch how fast this ball goes to the pocket. Come on. Leaves the seven pin. Boy, and with a rev rate that high, the last thing you would think Ryan Simonelli would leave would be a week seven, but a really good shot nonetheless, keeping it in the zone, online, and another pocket shot. Take a look now at the arsenal that Ryan has with him today for our title match. Going with the world beater, the strongest bowling ball in his arsenal. And a lot of that, again, being the length, 40-foot 40, 40 oil pattern, and also that speed and rev rate. He needs something that's going to grab a hold of that lane surface. Push. Okay. And again, Rob, anytime you hear a player yell push, it's inside of target, and they're trying to get it, or trying to coax it into holding the line. And again, that could have been disastrous, especially with that kind of speed and revs. His shot going through the nose could, could, could prove to be an ugly, ugly split. Instead, it's just a six bit. When you talk about disastrous, that was the start of the season for Simonelli. Takes care of that single pin. He had three finishes in the 100s. This, though, his second top 20 of the season. That first top 20 was last week, 14th at the TOC. He said he really felt like he was coming around in a better place mentally as well. Going number, Trump. Number one seeds has been nothing of a guarantee. Yeah, I was just going to say the only problem is as the number one seed, they're only at two and nine in 11 events, so um, not always the best position to be in. The most enviable, so not always the best. Right through the nose there a little bit for the Haas. Well, he just didn't make a good shot there and, and goes through the nose, leaving the 247. Patrick needs to make a move, in my opinion. I think he needs to open the lane up just a little bit. All it is. Spare up. The good thing is he's on a strike, so he doesn't lose count if he converts here. PA takes care of the 247. Time to fire up the old RV. To hit the road next week in New Orleans. Make that in two weeks. We'll be in Reno for the Bear USBC Masters live on ESPN Sunday, February 13th, 3 p.m. Eastern, the third major of the season. Back to live action as we begin the sixth. Just two strikes thus far for Allen, but he's only down 19. On. Simonelli started with a three-bagger, since then a pair of single-pin spare conversions. Wow, maybe. All right, good shot. Wow. Yeah, and Patrick is a little surprised at that ball going high, but again, that's all about what Ryan Simonelli is doing to the left side of the oil pattern. Still a tight match. It's just 20 pins. But what's troubling Rob is that Patrick Allen really has lost the pocket. Ryan Simonelli has not. Keep it in A win today for Simonelli. He would be the third first-time winner on the tour this season. Scott Norton and young Jim Koo 
winning earlier this campaign. Good shot. Good shot. Yeah. That's a drop and give me 10. I mean, he is pounding the rack. This could be the shot of the game. Come on. I want you to watch this fall three, see how it goes in front of his face. We see that a lot over the last couple of seasons with the new power players, the young power players. You see it in the Michael Fagan. You see it in the two-handed styles of Jason Belmonte and Oscu Palerma. Anytime you see the big high rev, high power guys, you're going to see a lot of those follow throughs going in front of the face. Come on, baby. Yeah, let's go. It is going to be tough for PA to find his way on top this match. Well, if you're Ryan Simonelli, it's it's all you can do right now just to control yourself. You know that you've got a great command of hitting the pocket. You know that your opponent can't hit the pocket. It's just a matter of pin carry and making good shots. It may just be a matter of time. <laughs> Messenger nestles up on the backside, unable to drop all 10. He really needed a strike there. Yeah, Patrick Allen's in big trouble. Time for a ball change, shots. angle change, and start to maybe open up the lane a little bit. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Just too weak down the lane. that one in. P.N. Belmonte and Paul, your defending champs. Here is Patrick Allen beginning the eighth, down 31. You can see he can only max out at 227. You know, Rob, he was so good at managing ball reaction, making the right ball changes early on. We saw it against Tommy Jones in the first match. And then towards the end of the Pete Weber oh, match, man. he started to lose pocket and has yeah. never really recovered. His max score now 216. His opponent Ryan Simonelli is already in the 220s. Just two strikes here in the title match for Allen. Simonelli closing in on his first ever Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour title. What do you say? Yeah! Janet, Dad, Angelo, Aunt Jody, all watching back in Cheektowaga, and they are celebrating, and I'm willing to bet there may be a few tears getting ready to come on out. What do you say? Yeah, baby! Well, thus far, just a flawless performance by Ryan Simonelli. Six strikes, two nine spares. The two nine spares were a seven pin in the fourth, a six pin in the fifth, he has not missed pocket, just making brilliant shots. And that's all he really needs to do right now, Rob, is to stay clean. He's in the 230s. All he needs is marks here on out. Six pin shy of a four bagger there. I'm sorry, a mark here, and it's all but over because even if he opens in the 10th frame, he'll be in the 220s. There you go. Ryan Simonelli is going to bowl the Tournament of Champions next Solid. year as a winner on the national tour. Solid bowling. He's going to win his first title. Keeping that sliver of hope alive with the strike. 
And, and you see that wry smile there. It's like, okay, well, this adjustment finally worked, or I, I threw it better. My goal today was to break 100 every game. <laughs> well, shout I did out that to his Tampa buddy Tom Thank Doherty. Thank you. I did it. <laughs> I did. Dan, PA was cheering for a 99 last he, week yeah, he, for Doherty. He he thought that it would be better if 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 it was just a double digit number and if Mika beat him by 200. A little more memorable, of, I guess. Yeah, double digit. I'll tell you what. I, I, Tom Doherty handled that beautifully. Did he not? Two as well as anybody could. Well, I got 200 every game. It's a little late for the trip six Motor. double. Mm -hmm. Patrick well, Allen now in the 200s. Yeah. Two more will give him 216. This in frames five through eight. I, I think, you know, Rob, I, and Patrick Allen's a great bowler. I don't think he moved deep enough, fast enough. And it just looks like now he's playing a little bit more in the center part of the great, lane. Great Got, to bowl with you guys today. It was awesome. I love it. You guys are awesome. I think he just stayed too close to where Ryan Simonelli's Hopefully playing. We get to come back next year. It's great to see Patrick pulling well again and back on television. Simonelli needing just five pins for his first tour title. Stay behind the foul line, keep it on the lane. Fellow Southpaw, PA cheering for him from behind. Cheek to Waga, get ready to celebrate. Ryan Simonelli, say hello to your first tour title. That's what I'm fucking talking about, baby. That's how we do it, baby. That's how we fucking do it. Good work, man. Mom, Dad, that was for you. That was for you. Everybody back home, I love you guys. Shout out to Janet and Angelo, his parents, back in Cheektowaga. Tour title, number one for the Southpaw from Cheektowaga, Ryan Simonelli wins the tournament named after the legendary Earl Anthony. The young man who grew up emulating Parker Bone III finally gets to press lips with the PBA Tour title. Ryan Simonelli, the young man from outside of Buffalo, getting his first you, Lumber Liquidators PBA Thank Tour you. title. We asked him yesterday what Thank it would you. mean. He would say, he would go on to say, it represents my spot out here. The last 20 years of hard work have not been for nothing. Next week, the Chris Paul PBA Celebrity Invitational at 4 Eastern over on ESPN. Before the big game, Reggie Bush, Nelly, Lil Wayne, Chris Paul will be there. Ryan Simonelli. A 24-year-old from Cheektowaga, New York, claims his first ever tour title. For Randy Peterson and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports so long from Dublin.